Hello, this is Derek Keats and I'm giving this little presentation on an ecosystem approach to ICT implementation in South African higher educational institutions. It was put together uh, for the SAACTED Flash MOOC um, that's taking place on Saturday the 12th of October 2013 and this MOOC is about uh, managing ICTs in South African higher education. So this is a short presentation that was just put together for that uh, for that MOOC. Now I want to start off by saying that all generalizations are false um, and as a consequence if you want to find fault with the uh, things that I'm about to talk about you certainly will have no trouble finding them because it's a generalization and there will always be circumstances in which this generalization doesn't apply. Now I want to tell you a little bit about myself and a little background um, I started writing code in 1974 and I've pretty much been coding now um, since I started on these cards. Um, I've <clears throat> been coding probably without stopping for more than a month or two in that entire time period. Um, in 1994 I got involved in uh, coding things for the web and in 2001 I switched my my life to GNU Linux and haven't looked back since. Um, everything I do is Linux based including this presentation and most of the code that I write. Now I started my, my uh, life as a biologist and uh, my background is in ecology so it makes sense for me to think from an ecological perspective about things that happen in organizations, particularly as I've spent uh, 10 years or so as a senior manager in uh, two different higher education institutions. Now, going back to biology, uh, that's where I got uh, started. I also have had an, and maintained a strong interest in education throughout my career. Um, and I have written a research and written papers on education and on technology and education. This got me kind of involved in technology and that got me involved in the management of, of institutions. And one of the things I realized is that the ecological approach or the ecological way of thinking, of thinking of organizations as interacting systems, applies across all of these. And if you're involved in IT management or ICT management in, in organizations, um, this can be a useful way to think about things. Now if you look at ecosystems <clears throat> and you look at organizations, they have things in common. First of all, they're complex systems and this particularly applies to education institutions, higher education institutions. Um, and they have emergent properties, things that come out of the interactions that happen in the system that you can't uh, predetermine or necessarily manage to uh, any degree. Now one of the things I came to realize in my 10 years in management is that a lot of decisions are taken on the basis of criteria uh, that people who are outside the making of those decisions wouldn't believe. They're taken on the, on the basis of assumptions, on the basis of wishful thinking, on the basis of conventional wisdom, whatever that is. Uh, blind faith is a common uh, way to make decisions. Hype is a very common way to make decisions. Fear, uncertainty and doubt. Goodness knows I've had enough of that in my uh, technology management career. Fear, uncertainty and doubt is a major, major driver in technology decisions in organizations. And pseudo data. What do I mean by pseudo data? I'm sure you've all seen it. It's when you make a table and you compare two things. Uh, that you want to, to make a decision around. And so you line them all up and uh, according to criteria and you have thing A and thing B and you <clears throat> pretend that you're doing this objectively um, but you know that you want to, you want to um, you, you know the thing that you really want to do is have thing A and so you do things uh, to suggest that thing B is inferior. And this is a very, very common practice in ICT decision making in organizations, one I wish we could stamp out. And so the ecological approach to management 
uh, might give us some insights into better ways to make decisions. Now, <clears throat> there, when, when we look at ecological processes, there are some core fundamental things that make ecosystems function. And these are disturbance, predation, disease, symbiosis, competition, herbivory, and production. And we can manipulate those systems and we can understand exactly the degree to which those particular fundamental things uh, impact any particular system. And what are the core fundamental things that make organizations as ecosystems function? Well, people who are involved in technology are sure to be familiar with the whole notion of technology, process, and people. These are three of the core fundamental processes to make organizations' systems work. Now, oftentimes when people are looking at ICTs in an organization, um, the focus is on the technology. And an enormous amount of effort goes into choosing the right technology or choosing the technology that best matches the preconceived notions of those who have the most power in making a decision. But there's little risk in technology. Technology generally works. Even bad technology with lots of bugs, you can fix the bugs and make it work. The key focus should be on processes and people, but it, it, it rarely is in organizations. So if we take these three and we combine with them the notion of a vision. What is it that we want to achieve? Where is it that we're going? What does the future look like? What should the vision for the organization be? You can't implement technology process in people if you don't know what the vision is. An organization has to have a vision, and that vision has to encompass and embrace ICTs. There has to be sustainable finance uh, in order to achieve the vision, in order to put the technology people and processes together. And so these five things are, in my view, I call them the VPPTF, Vision, People, Process, Technology, and Finance. Um, these are the core processes that make organizational systems work and work successfully. But there's risk in all of these, and organizations um, spend a lot of time looking at risk, but seldom do they actually look at the correct risk. So if we look at these, in technology, there are very, very few risks. And the worst case scenario for, te for technology is that there's bugs in it. Uh, well, you know, if you've got developers, those bugs can be fixed. So even bad technology can be made to work. The risk there is very low. Processes, uh, <clears throat> organizations tend to have processes, but they tend not to be necessarily geared towards uh, implementation of technology. So they propose a bit of, they pose a little bit of a higher uh, risk in terms of the um, core processes that happen in organizations. Sustainable finance. Well, you've got to have money in order to make an IT organization work, IT work within an organization. But sustainable finance is seldom where the big risks lie. The big risks lie in people and in vision. If you don't have an adequate vision, then you won't achieve your ICT goals in the organization. If you don't have adequate the prepared people, if you don't have people with the right mindset, the right skills and so on, you will not be able to succeed. So those are the two big risk baskets in organizations in terms of ICT implementation. But oftentimes people, the, the, the focus of organizations is on the technology. Now, <clears throat> the one thing about risk is organizations often assume uh, that you can have risk or no risk. So if you want to succeed at one thing, then you minimize the risk uh, of failing at that thing. But you may then increase the risk of failing at another thing. And so, you know, taking stability as an example, stability will always be balanced against the risk of st stagnation. And so organizations poorly understand risk. And that has been my experience and it's been the experience of many of the, of the colleagues that I've spoken to about risk. In fact, my one of my uh, CIO colleagues who works for government said that risk is a big stick that you use to kill anything you don't like. 
So let's look at this, this ecosystem from another perspective. Taking the vision, people, process, and, and technology underpinned by sustainable finance. What's in the vision basket? Here are some examples. They're not comprehensive by any stretch of the imagination. But you know, to what extent is the vision clear? Is it socialized? Is it known? Is it, do people talk about it? Is it on people's agendas? Is it unpacked into a strategy that has smart goals? How well is it aligned and how does it articulate with other visions and strategies within the organization? All of these are, are things that determine whether um, the ICT approach within the organization is going to be successful or how, how successful it's going to be. And you can take some of these things and you can unpack them into indicators and you can use those indicators then to measure, measure the extent to which the, the vision is a risk. Same with people. Here are some examples of characteristics of people, how they organize, what skills they have, how committed they are, um, how knowledgeable they are, what are the competencies that they have, how connected are they in this modern or postmodern world. Connectedness is a vitally important component. What about emotional intelligence? How do people deal with disappointment in the organization? Problem solving abilities, attitudes, beliefs, actions, passion, fears, hidden agendas, and, and, and the so-called politics or sociology of organizations. And I can guarantee you that if you're any of anybody who's listening to this is going to be a CIO in an organization, there is somebody in that organization who has an who has a hidden agenda and who is willing to play the politics of the organization to undermine anything uh, that you that you seek to accomplish. There will always be somebody. There will always be that person in an organization. And it's, uh, it's best to find that person and, and deal with them adequately from the beginning. So lots of things in the people basket. What about the process basket? Well, governance is clearly an important process in organizations. Um, leadership, management, uh, then there's processes related to technology like creation, deployment, operation, support, enhancement. Then there's sort of broader perspective uh, processes like innovation, uh, project management, change management, communication, and so on. And then the degree to which an organization puts effort into all of these things is also going to be a significant determinant of the degree to which an ICT initiative is successful. Then the technology itself, applications, supporting applications, operating systems, hardware, networks, internet, <clears throat> user devices, user operating systems, user applications, all of these come into play in determining whether technology um, is able to do, to do its, uh, to live up to its expectations within the organization. And these things all need to be aligned uh, for the successful implementation of ICD, but you must, should start with the vision and do the others together, unless of course you're a startup, in which case Oftentimes you will build the technology, then develop the vision, and so on. It's a, it's a whole different world. Now, let's look at the vision. And I'm just taking this as an example because I have limited uh, time availability in, in this presentation. And so I'm going to take vision as one example of the kinds of things that come to bear um, and when you are looking at an organization from an ecological perspective. Here is uh, an analysis uh, of an organization which I recently consulted for in relation to what I considered nine indicators of how, uh, good, a, how good their vision is with respect to ICT. And as you can see, uh, this organization achieves a score of zero on the vision exists. It's, got, uh, it, it's, it's made some steps at creating a vision, but it's just scratched the surface. Um, so it gets a one there out of five. And on all the others, integrating with other visions, uh, integrating other visions, being clear and, and well understood, having materials available that can be used with respect to the vision, it's socialized, there's its own, uh, it's a core area of focus, and, and there are management systems in place to see that the vision is, is actually uh, implemented. So you can see that this organization is not gonna ha have the most successful implementation of ICT because its vision is absent. Now I want to just um, 
spend a little bit of time. I might be rambling around a little bit here, but I want to I want to just create a typology of, of technology use. So one typology might be it exists. So you have computers on your desk, uh, you have cell phones when you need them, the network works, um, and, and so on. It exists. Um, you might have a slightly higher level of uh, a higher plane of existence in which the technology operates effectively. In other words, you know, the network's not down, email works all of the time. Um, if something goes wrong, it's fixed quickly. Uh, there's good support available. People are generally happy with, uh, with the way in which technology operates. Then we can think of another uh, level of existence in which technology provides quality. So in other words, technology isn't just there, it isn't just enabling, and it doesn't just work. It actually enhances the environment in which you are operating. So for example, if you are in a teaching and learning environment, uh, providing quality might be um, having good e-learning systems that people can use, having good, uh, having, having excellent uh, shared network access to um, research resources and so on that would be providing quality and then an organization might lead in technology this kind of organization will will obviously it's not going to lead in everything but it will have chosen some areas that it wants to lead in and it will be developing enhancing creating new technologies building on existing technologies in those areas and taking a leadership role now the delta, the amount of change associated with this and the, and the ability of an organization, the willingness of an organization uh, to accept change and to accept risk. So um, when technology just exists, of course there's a huge risk that you're falling behind, but the amount of change that happens is very little. So you install your operating system five years ago you're still using the same operating system no upgrades nothing everything just exists and it works when you want to operate effectively there's more energy and effort has to go into it around both from both the provision of the services and from the users who make use of the service and the greater the further up this this hierarchy you go um, the more change will happen in the system the more tolerance for change there is to be the more willingness there is to be to accept risk most organizations people are happy to sit down here and there is tremendous inertia to remain down there i've experienced this in two different institutions the amount of pressure to stay to lie low and keep it low is uh, I mean, it's amazing and so <clears throat> the organizations tend to be risk averse but if you want to innovate you have to accept change and you have to be willing to accept change and you have to be willing to allow change to be part of your life now different organizations have different levels of tolerance um, towards the, the amount of change that's necessary in order to play in these the four different levels and that's a uh, that's a thinking tool so that's another way to look at organizations and to think about the implications of ICT implementation within those organizations because an organization I'm going back to the, an organization that sits at the bottom of this is relatively easy to work with you don't actually even need much in the way of brains you can just buy boxes and turn them on pretty much but the further up this uh, level up these levels you go um, the more difficult it is uh, to find people who can provide the, the leadership and the technology skills and so on um, to operate at those levels and it, obviously it's not not going to be that for every technology you lead for some you will simply let it exist for others you will lead and so the the decisions that you make with respect to technology will vary within the organization depending on where in these four four levels that technology sits now let's look at at this from another perspective from what I call approaches to technology so one approach um, is you know you use old ways of doing things old approaches and technologies that appear to be tried and true 
and that lack risk. Um, these are this is using stale technologies. You know, you, your organization is in this boat for say the desktop. If your if the majority of your users are still using uh, Windows XP, for example. Then <clears throat> there's the safe approach. Staying just behind what is new and recommended by analysts such as Gardner who really don't actually tell you very much except that they're very good at predicting the past. But uh, you, can, you can say that we're going to stay behind uh, the curve and stay well behind the curve, play it safe. That's another approach. Another approach is to sort of take a balanced view, implementing some of what is uh, described as upcoming new things that are that are coming up by an, uh, analysts, but still staying mainly, playing it mainly safe. And then uh, the fourth approach is taking a lead in technology innovation. Now again, an organization is not going to take a lead in everything. There will be some areas where it will stay stale, there will be some areas where it plays it safe, there will be some areas where it takes a balanced view, there are some areas where it will, it might wish to be innovative. Now if we look at uh, most universities in South Africa, we play in the stale to safe space. Anybody who tries to uh, take an innovative approach, this, this approach is usually blown out of the water pretty quickly. Um, this contrasts us with, I think, the approach of the global top universities which tend to move a little bit further to the right in this, in, in this scenario. And they do uh, take some, you know, they do do some innovation. And in fact, we in South Africa typically import the innovation that they do, uh, joining it after the innovation is actually finished and say we're doing innovation. Innovation by imitation, I call it. We do this because we pseudo risk averse. I'd say we're not risk averse because if we were risk averse, we would want to be, you know, we would want to take a view that cuts across all, all of these, at least the safe, balanced, and innovative uh, areas. And we'd certainly want to do some things that were innovative uh, because the al alternative risk is the risk of getting left behind. So we're pseudo risk averse. We try to avoid rather than managing risk. You know, risk is a beautiful thing, it tells you what you need to do in order to manage it. But if you use it as an on-off switch, which was typically what we do, then we create our own risk as a consequence of doing that. But clearly, depending on where an organization is in this um, chain from stale through safe and balanced to innovative, the ways and approaches that we take to technology, to ICT implementation within those institutions is going to be different. An organization that wants to be innovative is going to approach technology differently from one that wants to be safe. And you can't treat all of them the same. Uh, one of the things, if we, if we take that, uh, those, uh, the, the upper three of those, um, and, uh, and we take um, safe, balanced, and, and innovative, um, obviously in the safe area there's little scope for innovation. Uh, and there's sort of frameworks and best practices, and that's where you, you can apply them very well. Uh, in in the, the next area, the, the you know the one uh, that takes that tries to take a balanced view, um, there's limited scope for innovation, but there is some uh, opportunity for innovation. And then, if you're really taking an innovative perspective, then this is of course led by uh, by a desire for innovation, and you need to have in place processes. To, to foster innovation. So if you're working in the in the outer area, the green uh, part of the circle, then you need processes to foster innovation. If you're in the in the yellow part of the circle, you actually need processes that actually impede or prevent innovation. So clearly taking the same approach across all kinds of institutions is not um, a good one. Now <clears throat> one of the things uh, that I think is important is is the technology architecture, and technology architecture actually allows an organization, you know, well done with a view that we want to do some innovation, but we want to also have some things that are balanced and 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 uh, given some that are stale. If you have the right architecture, you can cut across all of those, and a good uh, uh, leader, technology leader, will know where and you know when to play in which of those spaces. 
and the architecture will facilitate that. So architecture is an important component of the ecology as well. Now, we can use thinking tools. I, I like to use tools a lot to, to, to think about and, and to produce decisions in organizations around ICT. So how do you know where you want to be with respect to technology? And you can take any sort of two pairs of, of things that have a high and low value and you can compare them in this way and it can help you figure out where it is you want to be. So if we take two views of ICT in, in academic institutions, one is that it's for administrative purposes and the other is that it's for academic purposes. Another view is that it's enabling or it's strategic. In the old days, in the 90s, a lot of talk was about technology is an enabler. Technology is an enabler. You hear that so often, no, technology is an enabler. I can tell you that if you hear somebody say that, they haven't got the foggiest clue what they're talking about. They've never had to manage technology and they're reading books that were written in the 1990s. Technology in organizations has to be strategic. If it's not strategic, then, you know, we're lost. Uh, unfortunately, in South Africa, we do have this tendency to think of technology as an enabler. And then what are the characteristics of an organization, We're pretending, depending on where it, it sits within these uh, uh, matrix of these four um, possible uh, values. So in the, at the bottom left, uh, admin and enabling. So the focus would be on big systems, networks, data, quality, admin processes. If this is the focus of your IT department, then this is where you sit. You're looking at ICT from an administrative perspective and from an enabling perspective. If there's a, and, and of course these things are, if you, as you go from uh, bottom left to upper right, they, um, they also uh, accumulate one another. So, um, <clears throat> you know, it, it's not that because you focus on uh, big systems uh, networks in the bottom end that you don't focus on it in the right end. Actually, they're, uh, you know, the one underpins the other. Okay, that's old uh, stuff. If, if your focus is on academic, but you still think enabling, then you'll be focusing on buying e-learning technology, buying stats packages, buying desktop applications, providing basic user support. So, if you're if you if this is your organization, then you, you know if you're focusing on enabling and that's your organization, um, you're not being strategic about the uh, about ICT. On the other hand, if you if you want to be strategic, but you still focus on, on admin systems, then the focus will be on, on leading systems, base technologies, innovative admin processes, extending systems through SOAS, services-oriented architecture, there's that architecture view again, um, being able to build on things, bolt them together because of the architecture that gives you an opportunity to be uh, innovative in some areas. And then, of course, you can be strategic uh, around academic as well. In that case, you'd be focusing on innovative use of technology for teaching and, and for research, uh, developing strong relations between institutional and research, ICT for innovation. There's a whole lot of stuff that lives up there. So the question is, where does your organization want to be? And where, where, is, where do you best locate yourself? Uh, if it's in that upper right one, then there are certain things you need to do. If it's in that bottom left one, then there are certain things you need to do. And they can't be the same. So when you're thinking about the ecology of s uh, systems within organizations, you need to know where it is you want to be. And you can take any number of traits of an organization, pair them up in this way and see where it is you are. And this can give you insight into the kinds of things that you need to do. If you're in the bottom left, do you want to stay in the bottom left or you, do you want to move in the, into the top right? So if you want to stay in the bottom left, then the delta is zero. If you want to move into the top right, then the delta is high. What are the things that you need to do in order to create that delta, in order to create the change? These are different scenarios and it's useful to know and to think about this from an ecological perspective. Another thing that falls under vision is strategy. To what extent does the organization actually have a strategy? And is a strategy unpacked into SMART goals? And by SMART goals, I mean specific. Uh, they're actually spelled out. They're measurable. You can know whether you've achieved them or not. They're aggressive. Some people put uh, the A to be achievable. Achievable is boring. Make it aggressive. 
obviously they have to be achievable, but they should be aggressively achievable. Um, they should be realistic. Um, no point in setting uh, your, you know, your goal to develop your, your first campus on the moon in the next 10 years because that's not going to happen. And so they also time bound because if, you're not, if they're not time bound, then you can't measure them. Okay. <clears throat> so here's an example of, uh, of one of those uh, SMART goals. Um, ensure that students possess computing devices and are connected to the Klingon University irrespective of time or place and are able to use their own and provided computing devices as knowledge access and creation tools in a connected way. That says a lot. There's a lot in there. And then you can start unpacking those into your SMART goals. So the strategic objectives unpacked into SMART goals. By 2013, student-centric mobile applications will be identified and by early 2014, relevant examples implemented or developed. And by late 2014, mobile access to administrative systems will be provided. So those are specific. They're time-bound. They're achievable. And you can measure them. You can tell whether you've actually achieved this or not. So if you don't have this as part of your development of your vision, then you're going to have a very limited impact. Okay, so that's just taking vision out of the vision people process uh, technology underpinned by sustainable finance and using it as an example. Now I want to just talk about some of the tools that are in the ecologist's toolbox. Now I'd like to use concept mapping um, to, to really build up a picture of the ecosystem. And I use uh, a tool called Visual Understanding Environment, which is an open source technology from uh, Tufts University. Beautiful, beautiful piece of technology. Runs across all platforms, runs on Mac, runs on Windows, and runs on, of course, Linux, or I wouldn't be using it. So here's a fictional example of how I've used this. So I've, I was called on um, by Wharf to uh, convert the Klingon Empire's home base on Kunos to free and open source software on the desktop. A very simple project. Just convert all the desktops to, to FOSS. Not difficult. Uh, with a longer term view of a broader FOSS strategy. So this is a really easy technology from a technology perspective. You know, it's, it's, it's absolutely no risk from purely from a technology perspective in, in implementing this. So how did we go about it? We conducted preliminary interviews with key Klingons. We used our own understanding, experience, and knowledge of uh, free and open source software. And we built a concept map uh, based on the VPTF model. So here's the concept map, and I'm sure you can read all of that. And I'll leave you to read it, and I'll come back in a few minutes. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you obviously can't read all of that, but it's to give you a sense of a very simplified version of a concept, concept map because this is uh, literally about a day's work. Um, if you really, really were getting into mapping the ecosystem, this map would be much, much bigger and there'd be a lot more stuff on it. So this is a simplified version. At the center of it is the, is the task that we, we the, the thing that we're tasked to do, an ecosystem for the conversion of the Klingon Empire home base uh, to FOSS on the desktop. Now, in this concept map, uh, branches and relationships have meaning, and colors have meaning. So when you look at it, if you know what, it, what the colors and the branches mean, you can actually get a pretty good picture, even without actually reading the words. So at the center of it is the, is the task, as I said, and then surrounding that in a wheel are the five elements of the Vision People Process Technology and Sustainable Finance. And then each of those is unpacked into some level of detail. And so we take technology, for example, and we're going to convert the desktop. Uh, what is the current software stack that people are using? Uh, obviously, there are some specialized applications. What are those specialized applications? How do we find out how to, how to map those? Um, or do we leave the people that use the specialized applications with their um, proprietary desktops? What do we do? Then there's the infrastructure side of technology. What are the things that we need in order to make that uh, that desktop system work? We've got authentication. We've got the network. We've got back-end systems. And how uh, do these back-end systems interact with the desktop? All of that is mapped out in this ecological approach. OK. So that's that's kind of, I'm not going to go into any more detail than that. Uh, you can ask me questions about it if you want. Um, I have another tool that I use, which is I call it the, the technology radar, and I stole it from somebody. Um, 
I've actually forgotten who I stole it from now, but um, I stole the idea, not the content. So the idea here is that you have uh, four quadrants, and in higher education institutions, starting from the bottom left and going clockwise, uh, you have infrastructure, the things that make the organization work, that have to be there, teaching and learning, the core business of the institution, research, another element of the core business of the institution, and management and administration, things that the institution needs to do in order for the core business stuff to be able to work. And what we've done here is, in the center, we've said, there's a bunch of technologies that are old, we need them, uh, they should be just there, and they should just work. We can actually outsource that. We don't, you know, there's no advantage to us um, of, of having qualified skills in-house uh, to do basic things like that. And so in the middle are things that we can outsource, or we can insource, or we can, but you know, they're not areas for, for innovation. Then around that <coughs> are a set of technologies that we might want to own, we might want to maintain them ourselves, because there's some benefit to us as an organization to do that. Then there is some technologies that, uh, you know, that are new on the scene, and or they're mainstream in some places, but they're not mainstream in, in South Africa. And these are opportunities for us to innovate. Um, and then there are technologies that are coming down the pipeline um, where we want to watch and experiment and perhaps create collaboration between, between the core IT management in the institutions and the researchers in IT related departments like engineering and computer science. So there's a whole lot of things that are out in this basket, and this is where it can get really exciting. And an organization that is taking innovation seriously will want to play in both of those outer circles. An organization that is, you know, just wants to minimize pseudo risk and stay fairly safe will want to stay into those, stay in those inner inner circles. And this gives you an idea of different ways of approaching technologies. Another way to think about it, another way to think about the ecosystem. It's not going to be uniform. If you go to one institution and you try to apply principles from another institution in that institution, you know, you're either going to create risk for yourself or going to create risk for the institution of a different kind from what I'm talking about. Okay, so here's our, our ecosystem model. Uh, we could move from vision and look at people and process and technology, but then uh, I'd be here for quite a long time, so I'm going to skip that. But what I want to do is just talk about the people box for a little bit. The biggest risks in an organization is going to be in the people box. And I could spend days talking about some of those challenges that live in the people box. But it's also where your greatest opportunities for success lie, and so this is an area where one really needs to focus. For goodness sakes, don't focus on the technology. So that's just a little brief overview of my uh, ecosystem, my ecological view of the world in terms of ICT implementation in higher education institutions. And I thank you for uh, watching this video if you got all the way to the end. Uh, and I should point out that this presentation and the video were made entirely using free and open source software. Never touch proprietary software. Um, and it's licensed under a Creative Commons attribution license. And I would encourage you to just say no to the horrible, disgusting, non-commercial restriction on content. Just don't do it. Just like you don't do drugs. Thank you. Bye.